What's up, what's up, what's up? I know I'm a little early, so I'm gonna allow people to go ahead and start to migrate and matriculate on in to this conversations with Carrie Two Spoon. Maybe I should like, you know, come up with like a catchy theme song or something. I don't know. What's going on, everybody? What's up? What's up? What's up? Happy Saturday to everybody. Hopefully it's a good one. I know it's uh, Easter tomorrow, so I um, hope everybody is enjoying themselves, considering, you know. What's up? What's up, everybody? What's up? What's up? So I, I started doing these um, a while back just to... Uh, let you guys get a chance to ask me any questions. I know for the most part, it's just me playing a lot of times. And maybe there's some questions that you have about the industry or there's some questions about, uh, you know, just various things that you want to know where it'd be gear wise, in my opinion, about different things. Oh, somebody signed in to Carrie's Camp tonight. That's what's up. That's what's up. So it's just a chance for us to connect on a different level. Uh, most of the time you see me with my instrument in my hands and that's, co that's cool. I, I get it. But there's times where you just want to be like, yo, I got a question I want to ask you about this or or what's your opinion about this? And that's what it's that's what it's all about. So I'm grateful for every um, person that decides to join in on these conversations because I just want to be able to connect on a different way that you get a chance to know me and um, and understand who I am. How can I learn the fretboard? Um, so what I suggest if you want to learn the fretboard is um, getting note cards, right? And then those note cards you write out three sections. So that means three blocks, put six lines, and then you start to name the string. So um, you use those flashcards to kind of like to quiz yourself on. So you know, three frets by three frets by three frets and so on. Now, you know, once you get to the double dots, the fretboard repeats itself. So it's not this, it's, the, it's identical to what you did before. So um, after the double dots, it repeats itself. That's a way to learn the fretboard. So as I was saying before, um, this is a way to get a chance to connect with me and to get to know who I am outside of just playing guitar and just kind of teaching you something where we get a chance to like have conversations and talk about um, anything that's music related. You know what I'm saying? I will not step outside of the boundaries of things that I do not know. Like I'm not a guru on how to cook <laughs> or how to paint or to do anything like that. So I try to keep it in my lane. I like, I like to stay in my lane. So that's the biggest thing. Any tips for new guitarists if you want to start to uh, with neo soul R and B? So what I would suggest if you want to start with neo soul R and B, any tips for a beginner is you need to get a good mentor. You need to find somebody that knows exactly what they're talking about so they can kind of show you the way. Um, I pride myself on I've, I've created a platform where I uh, I help students whether they're beginners or they're intermediate or they're advanced. I try to take them all the way, so I try to give them that. So. Um, for anybody that's listening, if you are 18 years of age and younger, you should ask your parents before you go to my website. But if you're um, older than 18 and you decide you want this is what you want to do, I suggest going to my website, carriescamp.com, and that's K-E-R-R-Y-S-K-A-M-P.com. And I really spell it out for you um, to show you exactly what you need to learn, what you need to do as a beginner that wants to learn this particular style. It's a fascinating style that's very versatile. And you can really use it across the map if you know, because I'm going to show you, I'm going to teach you how to navigate to use it in different genres. I play this style in other genres, but I'm like, I'm still genre specific and I'm really like, um, I honor the genre that I'm playing, but I know how to add little elements in there in order to just make it sound the way that it needs to sound. So definitely, if you're a beginner and you, you're looking to try to, to to learn this particular style, learn this flavor, learn this style, learn this, this um. I like to call it magic, the sauce, whatever. Go to carriescamp.com, K-E-R-R-Y-S-K-A-M-P.com. That's another comment. It says, how do I learn to riff sounds musically covertly? Co what does that say? How do I make learn riff sounds? So if you want to learn how to riff and do sounds, there's a lesson that I teach in Carrie's Camp called Pivot Points, right? And I talk about how to use Pivot Points and how to make it easier for yourself so you're able to identify like, oh, these are the pivot points that I can use in order to start my riffs and how I can keep it in the chords so where I'm not trying to do so much because you have a super small window. It's like super small in order to, to do everything in and you don't want to miss that window. 
all right, I have to see you play some chords that are that are out of the progression. Do you pick them randomly or will you have an experiment before? So if I'm picking out chords and playing a progression, what I try to do is I try to honor that um, particular progression, right? So if I'm in a specific key, I try to pick chords that are in that key. What I will do is I will experiment to see if I can find chords that have tension, right? That have that, this rubbing point that is not necessarily in the wrong key, but it's like right there. So there are, are moments that I'll experiment, but if it does not fit, then I'm not going to play it. I'm an intermediate player and I've hit a block, but I want to learn the fretboard freedom. So if you hit a if you hit a roadblock and you're finding yourself like, man, I really want to learn, um, I tell people all the time, like learning, finding the different points, right? So if you know where F is in one particular part, find F on the different parts of the neck of the guitar, right? So you have F up here, then you find F down here, find F right here, then play that chord, find the F major seven, F major seven. And then what you start doing is recycling the same progression, right? So if I did one, two, three, four in a position up here, I would do one, two, three, four down here. So let me show you an example just so you can get an idea, right? So let's say if I'm in the key of F, right? And I want to learn one, two, three, four. I'm going to come down here. One, two, three, four. And play the same progression so that way I'm able to start to learn the neck of the fretboard. Right? That's a way that you're able to learn the neck of the fretboard, really unlock the fretboard. It's taking it piece by piece, really just dissecting it and understanding like, this is the way that you're gonna be able to get that, so this is how you're gonna do it. Just taking it piece by piece, recycling the same lick so that, and then you have to start to remember, okay, use the reference dot. When I talk about the reference dots, so if you have a guitar, if you see these dots up here, right? These are reference dots. Using those dots to know, to kind of gauge where you are, right? I don't know if you can see those dots. Like those are the double dots I was telling you about. Like after these double dots, the guitar repeats itself. So using these reference dots and know exactly where you are. Or if you want to look at the guitar and see these reference dots and know, okay, that's how you can use it. And start paying attention to those particular points. So you know that first reference dot on the B string, or I'm sorry, on the the second thickest string, I know that that is going to be C. I know right above that is going to be G. And I know if I go all the way to the beginning of the neck of the guitar on the thickest string, that is going to be F. So start doing things like that so the way it's, it's able to like, you're able to understand and dissect the guitar in such a way that you're, it starts to make sense. Now it's one of those things you're going to have to practice and repeat constantly until you get it. And once you get it, then you'll be able to see like certain points on the guitar and know like, oh, okay, cool. I, I know where that key is. I know how to play that. And then start to use your ear so that way your ear is able to kind of like help guide you sometimes. Wow, you explain that very well in a short amount of time. Thank you, I appreciate that. You're awesome, dude, thank you, appreciate it. Any advice on using guitar to play a piano or other instruments, bass song? Yeah, so if I'm using guitar in order to play like a piano bass song or um, a bass led song, I'm listening for the bass notes in the song. So. I listen to those bass notes. What I have to do is I'm using my formula every single time. So the formula for me is understanding what key it's associated with. So what I'm talking about is I'm talking about is every song is associated with a major key. It doesn't matter if it starts on a minor chord or not. I listen to those bass notes. I determine what key it's in. Then that way I can use my formula of understanding even though it may be a piano led song, I can use those same chords because the chords voicings are similar between a piano and a guitar, if not ideal, exactly. So those two instruments are the same, it's just how you play them. And that's what I use in order to kind of help myself get through any song that may not be guitar heavy. All right, what's the technique to practice to get her stronger on hammer-ons? It's just, you gotta practice. There's no other technique besides just doing it. So what I show people a lot of times, if you're gonna practice hammer-ons, let's just say we start um, with B-flat, right? We're gonna do the um, just practicing dun 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 until your pinky gets strong. Then you start incorporating the beat in the E string, and what you can start doing is moving that chord.
that's a great exercise. And if you want to start, like, you know, increasing your strength and your speed, then set a metronome. So the metronome, you hear like, da, 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 da. You can make it go faster, da, da, da. So you're trying to do that same movement in between. That's the, the greatest way to, in order to strengthen yourself, in order to do hammer-ons. All right. Uh, it's a Boss MEA pedal, the best model in that line, or has it been upgraded to a new model? Honestly, I do not know if it's been upgraded or not. I'm telling you, the Boss ME80 is a great pedal because I personally use it. I don't, I don't try to get the newest, latest, greatest thing that comes out all the time. I get gear that works, and I know that it works, and I know that I can use it in all platforms, whether that be in the studio, whether that be for a live local gig, or that be being playing like on a huge tour. I get gear that I know that works. And I tell you that from personal experience, the Boss ME80 works. Right now, mainly I use it for my studio setup. It's uh, perfect for records. It, it, I mean, it shows up. I'm able to do most things that I need to do on my records. So that's what I'm using. And that's why I can, I can vouch for it. All right. Bigs up on the Bad Cat and Helix demo. The tone was amazing. Tone is everything. Yeah, man, um, I'm not going to lie to you. When I first got the Helix, I was a little intimidated by it because there's... I'm one of those guys, I don't profess to be like um, one of those gearheads that knows, I know how to do this and do that. I don't know. So like for me, I like simple, simplistic things because when I'm on stage and I have to play for an artist, I don't want to have to overthink like my gear when I need to play. So I was intimidated by it. So once I got some help to kind of get it set up and I realized that, oh, this is really user friendly, then it's just like, oh, I can pair it with an amp because for me, I like to have an amp on stage. I'm not one of these guys that like I can go just off of my ears and a monitor. I don't like that. Like I have my ears, but I like to have like the feel, the presence of the amp behind me because I've been playing with an amp my whole life. And so even if I have to turn it down or turn it around or whatever, I like to have an amp so I can have that presence. And so for me, um, playing um, with the Helix is really important to ensure, if, and then my sound guy to ensure that because the Helix has the XLR outs left and right on the front, I can send him a direct out without having to mic my amp which is great so I know that, that signal is super strong and we can get stereo. So it worked out where I can have my amp behind me and I can use the Helix and I was able to really dial in my tones that I use my pedal board um, in order to like find the sweet spots. And that's what I tell anybody, when you get gear, you gotta take the time with your gear and find the sweet spots. If you see me playing a pedal and you like, I get it, but I don't sound like him, I've taken time to massage and find the sweet spots. Most of your musicians or your guitarists or whatever are not gonna tell you their exact Thing. And even if you got my exact patches, you still have to massage them because I'm always constantly tweaking them like to whatever room I'm in, to if, it, if the sound changes or it feels a little different, I'm always constantly upgrading and modifying my sound. So you have to do the same thing. All right. Okay, um, greetings from the UK. Any advice on eliminating fret buzz? Yeah, if you're having fret buzz, it's probably because your string, your action is too high. And when I'm talking about is action, I'm talking about like how close the strings are. You see that? You see the strings are like super close, right? So it's, it's easy for me to push them down. If the strings are like super far away and then you don't have enough pressure, you're gonna experience fret buzz. Or if your fingers are touching in between the chords, you're gonna experience fret buzz. That's the only way to uh, eliminate fret buzz. What you might need to do is check your strings and then check to see if like there's a warp in your neck. If your neck is straight or if it's warped, you might have to get your neck replaced or uh, take it to a guy and have him adjust the truss rod. And the truss rod is in the, the guitar. That's like the little metal rod that goes throughout the neck of the guitar to keep it straight or whatever. You may have to ask him to adjust the truss rod. I wouldn't suggest doing it yourself unless you know exactly what you're doing. If you don't know what you're doing, I would take it to um, somebody to have him fix it. Okay, let me go back and look at some of these questions. Hey, Carrie, love your work. Um, I know the net... The notes on the neck of the fretboard and the scales, it says, the, but the problem is getting out of shapes and navigating the fretboard freely. How do you do that? All right, so there's nothing wrong with like using the shapes. The thing about it is your tone, right? So for me, I use the same shapes. I'm not up here trying to like, wow you with like, oh, I know a whole bunch of shapes. I'm just saying I know that these are the shapes that I use. But it's all about the tone and the tenor that I'm using in my fingers, right? So if I'm using this, one, two, three, four. I'll use it in another key. But it's about the trills. So the stuff in between is how you make yourself sound really nice. Okay, so don't be like, well, I only know these only couple shapes. 
use those same shapes. The thing about guitars, you want to make it simple. Don't make it more difficult and complex than it needs to be. That's going to be the way that you get yourself in trouble by trying to make it more complex. Keep it super simple so that way you can duplicate it every single time. And then start adding like little trills, hammer-ons, like little things in between as the technique is what's really going to massage your sound. It's not about you trying to do different 50 million different chord shapes. That does not, that's not how you, you, you play music and that's not how you're going to keep a gig or how you're going to make yourself sound great. It's the small subtleties that you're doing in between the stuff that makes yourself sound great. I use the same shapes. I preach the same shapes. I teach the same shapes because I want my students to understand that whenever you find out what key you're in, because you already know the shapes, that's going to eliminate half of the problem and half of the, the effort and work that you have to do in order to make yourself sound great. All right. We got a lot of great questions. All right. I have a hard time playing with the pick but I have a very long thumbs. Any suggestions? Uh, what I would tell you to do is like, be mindful of your pick placement where you hold it, right? So you wanna be mindful of how you hold it. Like if you have longer thumbs, maybe you don't wanna like play it like this. You wanna like pull that pick back and be where you can have like the tip really kind of surfacing and then being more intentional about how you play with the pick and just be more mindful about thinking about it. It's, repetition until you can't get it wrong, right? So I will pull my thumb back, make sure I have enough of the tip of the of the pick right there so that way I, like, it's sticking out, right? But I've still got it secure in the back part. I'm holding it, not to the point that I'm shaking, like I'm holding it so tight that I'm shaking, but I, I have it secure where you just can't, you can't rip it out of my hand, but I have a nice little grip on it. But I'm also like not straining to the point that I'm like, I'm shaking about to pass out. So that's what I would suggest. All right. Okay. What's your favorite guitar body type? I can't say favorite, but I, I'm drawn more to the Strat body style. Um, it's not my, I won't say it's like my favorite because I have a lot of guitars that I like, but I'm drawn right now in this season of my guitar playing more to that, that body type. Um, what are some old school Motown R&B guitars that you recommend to listen to? I don't... I wouldn't say old school Motown. I would say if you're going to listen to a guitar player that's from that older generation, I would do your research on Eddie Spanky Alford. He hands down is the best guitarist. And a lot of guitarists now have like, they don't, they may not know that they're emulating his style. That They've like, they've reached into that pocket to understand that. But I would say Eddie Spanky Alford is a person that every guitarist probably needs to know who he is. His stuff is so... He plays guitar like a keyboard player, but like better than a keyboard player. The, the way he can get chords, the way his voicings, all that kind of stuff. So a lot of guitarists now don't even realize that like they're getting their influence from him, but that's where it's, that's really, really where it started from. All right, have you thought about a monthly subscription to Axis? Yeah, I thought about it, but the only thing when it comes to monthly subscription for Carrie's Camp, my staff is really small. So I would have to hire more people, which would take a little bit longer. So right now we're still in the build phase. We're not all the way at the face like where it's like, oh, it's a huge entity and we we have the support. Like I'm really working this with uh, limited staff. So I'm trying to make this cost friendly for people and also like to make it make sense. So, I mean, once we grow a little bit more, then of course we'll, we'll, we'll offer that. But right now it just does not make sense. Um, Other questions. Hi, Carrie. I says, I know you love playing strats, but are there any guitars with shorter necks? Would you recommend for a beginner? Okay, if you're a beginner, uh, I tell people all the time, if you're a beginner guitar player, I suggest, uh, for me, is getting an acoustic guitar because you can take it anywhere and you don't need to worry about having cords and cables to plug in to make it like into an amp. And you can play it at any time and it's, like, it's a great resource. So they make mini acoustic guitars and they also make full body. So they make many Taylors, many Martins. I don't know if Fender makes any smaller guitars, but yeah, like a backpack version so that way you can get used to playing what it feels like. And then once you feel like you're accomplished enough on an acoustic, because acoustic and electric offer the same notes, your approach is the only thing that's different. But you're, when you're practicing, you're just a beginner, that's what I would suggest doing. Okay. Um... Any advice and tips for a beginner guitarist? If you're a beginner guitarist, 
I suggest going to somebody that's like that can mentor you and show you exactly how to do it. And that's where I keep talking about um, my online community, Carrie's Camp. I've built something from the ground up. I've literally gone through step by step to really teach and show a person that's a beginner that wants to learn to get all the way to advanced or if they want to go all the way to I'm sorry, if they want to go to intermediate or they can go to advanced, I've shown them how to do that. And if you're 18 years of um, age and younger, then I suggest asking your parents before you go to this website. But if you're older than 18, then I suggest going to Carrie's Camp. That is K-E-R-R-Y-S-K-A-M-P.com. And that's really like when you're talking about a beginner and you really want to know, you want to learn this style, that's where you go. You need to have a mentor. You can't navigate this by yourself. You can watch YouTube tutorials and I do a lot of YouTube tutorials. But it's not going to show you, to give you the understanding of why did that person do that? Why should I do that? And as a guitarist, you really want to understand why that's going to make it easy for you so that you can duplicate this sound all the time. So you need to have a mentor. All right. How does one achieve the R&B and the song tone perfection? Uh, Terrence, you got to go to my website, man. I can show you specifically how to do that. I can tell you. But when you start to see it and you start to see me implement it, you'll be able to understand. So go to carriescamp.com and that'll really show you how to do it. Um, do you tune your guitar to other keys other than E? No, I'm not one of those guys that's gonna experiment and do like E flat tuning. I don't do that, I do standard tuning um, because that's it's called standard for a reason. So for me, I use standard tuning. So regardless of whatever band I'm in, whatever situation I'm at, and I don't want to overthink. I've learned where everything is in E tuning. So I don't want to try to figure out something else newer, like, oh, I should do this and this may sound good. Nah, I'm not changing anything. So um Okay. How much of your guitar knowledge is based off of technique, understanding, theory compared to the practical understanding. It's a balance. For me, it's a balance. I have a lot of theory understanding and I have a lot of technical understanding, but it's a balance. That's why I'm able to play the way that I'm able to play and teach the way that I'm able to teach and play for the artists that I've played for and played on the records that I've played for because it's a balance. I don't try to do it. Oh, you got to know theory more than you know the practical. You got to know practical more than you. Now, back in the day, I used to be more practical than theory. Then when I understood, like I started to have a better understanding of the relationships and how it works. So then I'm, I'm able to really unlock the fretboard and know how to navigate a whole lot better. So it, you got to have a balance. Like I don't say spend so much time to where you become like a theory like junkie, but you got to have a, a at least an understanding so the way you understand how to navigate the guitar, you understand how music works, so the way you're able to play even more without any more restrictions. Okay, um, how much does the thickness of the pick affect the fatness of a guitar sound? Um, honestly, I don't know. Like, there's so when I play acoustic, I play with the metal pick, right? That's just my vibe. That's what I do. Um, if I'm not playing with the metal pick, then I'm using my fingers. Now on my um, electrics, I play with the medium pick. Now my, I have a 335. That one I use the thicker pick because I want that kind of jazzier. Um, boxier sound so like the thickness of your picks will definitely determine your sound but you don't want it to be so thick that you can't control it right so I have a harder time playing like the thicker pick because I have like for years I've only used a medium so playing with the thicker pick so the sound is a little it can be challenging at times so sometimes I'm just like man I don't want to play that guitar so I, I mainly will use it when I'm like doing something that's a little bit more jazz influenced like Christmas vibes or for records that that cost for it so Thicker picks definitely change the tonality, but you don't want to have something that you can't control, that you can't manipulate in order to get the strings to sound the way that you want them. That's the biggest goal. All right. Oh, okay. Sign up for Carrie's Camp as a B-Day gift to myself. What's up? Welcome to the family. Welcome to the family. I started out with a Simon Holly body and moved to a Strat style body guitar. I've Listen, I got all. I'm telling you, you're going to be happy with the Strat style. I've got semi hollow body. I've got hollow body. I've got all types. But I, I feel like a Strat is just like, for me, it's the most practical thing right now, you know. What other genres of music do you dig? Also, what guitars do you like in those genres? Um, I like jazz fusion. Mark Leteri is a huge fr uh, friend and a huge influence. Um, 
I like blues rock. So like Kingfish, um, Eric Gales, Seth Rosenberg, I think his name. Art Mendez is like a cool guitarist. Um, Stevie Ray Vaughan, one of the, the OGs. And then like, we like Jimi Hendrix. I like blues from like John Mayer, Derek Trucks. Um, I like Greg Howell. Who else do I like? I like Slash. Like they all offer something really cool, man. So I like, I like, a, I think I have a wide palette of guitars that I like. Let's go back. We got a lot of people. A song, a song. It's really cool. So, do you read music? How important is that? So, I do read. Um, it's not super important depending on what artist you play for. So, I feel like reading is really if you're trying to do like Broadway. If you're doing late night TV, depending on what late night TV that you're doing, um, reading is really strong. Now, if you're playing for major artists, they're not going to throw a bunch of sheet music in front of you and be like, yo, read this. It's usually like they give you a Dropbox or whatever platform that they send the music. You learn the music, you have rehearsals, but they're not giving you sheet music and be like, all right, we're going to start at bar such and such. And here's your sheet music. And that's they're not doing that. They're not throwing sheet music in front of you. So I would say like. Um, you can spend some time learning it, but like, if, unless your desire is to play Broadway or play for like plays and musicals, I wouldn't spend that much time on it. I wouldn't like use that to exhaust my time to try to learn something that I'm not really going to use all the time. Who were some of your favorite new guitarists? Um, I like Isaiah Sharkey. I like J-Mo. Um, I like Agape Jerry. I like... Who else is really dope? Sean Hinton, Tim Stewart, Eric Walls, um, Mateus. Um, uh, Justice West. Who else? Man, there's man, there's so many talented guitars right now that I can't really think of everybody. Um, there's so much talent. There's like it's. I mean it's. It's wide open, you know what I mean? So there's super talented guitars everywhere. If I miss somebody's name, please don't you know, massacre my name and say like, oh, he didn't say such and such. I just literally was trying to think of everybody, but like there's, when you don't have these names in front of you, you're not like, oh my God, so. What are your knob settings on your Strat and on your amp? All my strats are turned, all, everything's on 10. I don't modify anything, everything's on 10. Uh, amp settings depends on what amp that I'm playing will determine how, if the treble is higher than the bass or the bass is higher than the treble, it just depends on that amp. And also I always have a little bit of reverb. I don't, each amp is different. So I can't give you like a bass setting cause they're all different. What albums have you drawn the most imp inspiration from? I want to say most, I mean, I've drawn inspiration from D'Angelo's Voodoo, from Tony, 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 from uh, Snarky Puppy, from, uh, I mean, there's so many dope albums. I can't even think of everything. Like, even some of your older school, like Luther Vandross, Frankie Beverly and Mays, um, like Bobby Womack. There's a whole bunch of different genres that have like, you know, uh, albums that I've listened to over the years that I'm like, man, it's really cool. On your strat, what strat strings do you use? I use tens. Tens on my strats and elevens on my acoustics. That's what I do. I'm a bit late, but how are your tone settings? I love how full your sounds are. So, like all my tone settings when it comes to my amps are tone, like are amp specific. So none of my amps are, are the same. They have a general bass, but I always play to whatever room I'm in. So it doesn't matter if like if it's in like my room then if i go out and i have another amp i'm massaging it like i'll know like okay that's a little too bright so let me back off the highs and add a little bit more bass or that's like okay the mids are kind of scooped out let me adjust so i'm making adjustments all the way you know what i mean your thoughts on Volpec funk and Corey. so i've played with Corey wong before like i we did this thing for pickup jazz i think Corey is like a phenomenal guitarist like his style is just like unique to his own thing I think that that band is really dope. Um, so I think Corey is like phenomenal. Corey is like a super dope, you know what I mean? All right, Carrie, I'm absolutely, is it absolutely necessary to record more than one guitar track? 
I've been told that it has been done to reinforce the sounds. Of, is it necessary? I won't say the word necessary, but does it make the track feel a lot more full? Yeah. So for me, I'm always, I'm recording at least three or four different guitar tracks, not the same parts, but I'm playing like, like I'm, I'm playing like octaves of it. Sometimes I'm playing like different uh, chord voicings, chord options, because they may not take the first part or they may like the first part, but they may like the second chord progression. They may like the riffs that I'm doing. So I'm, I'm trying to give the producer as many options as possible so they don't have to keep calling me back and be like, yo, do this, do this, do this, do this. So I want to try to get them as much as possible. So it's almost like I'm not like I'm overwhelming them. I'm giving them tasteful options so they can use in order to paint whatever picture they want. Does this course have tabs and breakdowns? None of my courses, I don't teach tabs because I feel like tabs handicap guitarists. So I don't have tabs. Do they have breakdowns? Yes, everything is broken down and explained to a T to let you know exactly this is what I'm doing. This is why I'm doing it. This is how I'm doing it. This is how you can apply it. This is what it sounds like when you apply. If you don't apply, this is what it sounds like. I'm showing you all of the things. Everything that I do, Per se, in my playing, I'm teaching you exactly what I do. All of my trills, all of my movements, all of the sauce, I'm giving it all to you. Can you please recommend um, a guitar for an intermediate player? A Strat, if you if you get a Strat, right, and if you don't like the tonality, but you like the way it feels, then you upgrade the pickups. For me, I like Lambertone pickups. I feel like Lambertones are like, right now, they're the best pickups in the market. Um, I have... Four guitars that are, that are set with Lambertones. I have two Strats, I have one Jazz Master, and I have a Les Paul. So I feel like you know I love all those guitars. I wasn't really happy with the tone that wasn't that I was getting out of the pickup, so I upgraded the pickups. Do you like lead or rhythm better? That's a good question. It depends on the song. I, that's what I would tell you. It depends on the song, like. If I'm playing like a, a Usher song, like like uh, Take You Down, I want to be the lead player. I want to do all the lines. Da -da 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 -da. I want to do all the lines. But let's say if I'm doing like Never Too Much, like dun 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 dun, I like that staying in the pocket. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't. I want to be the, I want to be the rhythm. So it just depends on the song, you know what I'm saying? But like, like Chris Brown, like Take You Down. Da -da -da -da. I mean, I want to make the guitar sing, so I would definitely want to be lead on that. You know what I mean? So it just depends on what the song is. What are the best pedals for R&B? There is no such thing as the best pedals for R&B. I tell you what every guitar player should have. You should have a tuner. I feel like you should have a reverb pedal. You should have a little delay. And you should have a good overdrive pedal. I feel like those basic pedals are like what you need. Your preference is your preference. I can't say these are the best for R&B because there's no best. You got to massage whatever you got. That's what I suggest that every guitar player needs to have for R&B. And then from there, you can build your spaceship as big as you want or as small as you want. Can you please recommend our I did it already, a guitar for an enemy player at Strat? I says, how do you get a good sound out of your audio interface? So I'm not turning my audio interface all the way up. I'm, I'm turning it down. I'm watching for when it peaks. Same with my volume pedals or whatever I'm using. I'm watching whatever my volume is so it doesn't peak. And then I go through and then I find whatever amp that I want to use, like whatever preface, um, not preface, but whatever like um, amp setting, depending on if I'm using Logic, which I normally use, and then whatever pairs with the guitar. And then I massage that amp setting as well. And then I, I adjust the frequencies. There's a lot of science behind it. So it's not just plug and play, but I even I adjust the frequencies of how the guitar sounds in the mix so that way that like, okay, it's too pitchy, it's too high, so let me bring it down, let me cut it up, color it up a little bit, let me adjust this. So it's, it's the science to, behind it versus you just plugging and playing. Now, if you got a good engineer or whatever you know, system that you're set up and then the engineer would do it. If you don't have a good engineer, you have to kind of figure it out yourself. Do you prefer playing with a pick or, or your fingers? It depends. If it's an acoustic, then I prefer nine out of 10 to play with my fingers. Now, if I'm playing electric, it's pick all day. I'm not really doing that much finger stuff unless it's hybrid picking. Let's go back and read some of these questions. How do you balance your practice time when you're serving in the army? So when I was in the army and I was in garrison, 
whenever I came to my room, like at the end of the like, you know, end of the day, COB, that's when I would practice. Now, when I was deployed, whenever I wasn't on a mission, I got enough sleep, I would get up and I would practice. That's how I balance it. So it just depends on like I would try to use, you know, get enough rest. But then when I like I wake up and be like, all right, cool, let me let me practice. That's what it was. Now, when I was back in garrison, um, that's when I would be like, okay, when I'm off, I mean, it's my time so I can do whatever I want to do. You know, that's what I did. All right, let's see some more of these questions. What can you say? Oh, when can you say that you're an advanced player? When can you say that you're an advanced player? That's a tricky question. Um, when you can hear a song and you don't have to ask anybody what the chords are and you can play it effectively, you can play the song effectively to like let somebody else know exactly what you're playing. If they have to guess what you're playing, you're, you're probably not as solid as you want to be. And then you have a good grasp of the chords that you're playing. You know the names of the chords. You know the scales that it is associated with. If somebody call out the numbers, if that's how they communicate music, that you know exactly what's going on. That's when I was, it's not about time. You you could be playing for 15 years and still be like a, an intermediate beginner to any intermediate player. Time doesn't determine if you're um, advanced or not. It's about the knowledge that you have as a guitarist and being able to play and facilitate the music. That's what I would say that what determines you if you're an advanced player or not. The Fender Jazzmaster is king. I sat down and played one a couple versus the Simon Hollow body at a guitar center and Jazzmasters are king. I, I have a Jazzmaster. Um, I have one made by Iconic Guitars. This last tour that I was on with uh, Keanu Lede, I used it. That's my primary guitar. So once you find a good Jazzmaster, yeah, hands down, um, it offered me like everything I need. I would not take a Simon Hollow body out for a gig, but those are only just for specific gig like things or tone like things i'm not taking it out for my main guitar but the jazz master yeah i took it out what are your feelings about extended range guitars how does one know if one should trans i don't even know what that is so i'm i can't even answer that question i'm sorry i don't know what that is pedal reverb versus amp reverb i like pedal reverb honestly now what I do is I like to pair them together to find that sweet spot. Depending on certain amps, I, I usually will find a, a good way that the amp still resonates, but then I use the pedal reverb to pair it with it. So I like the stack reverbs, if you like, if you if you want to call it that. So I use pedal and amp just to find that sweet spot. Do you have formal training? Yes. How did you begin to learn for the first time when you picked up guitar? I learned by ear. Honestly, my dad would play eight track tapes and I would try to solo on the E string. Like I try to go up and down the E string and try to do my solo on the E string and it was horrible, but that's what I did. Then when I got to high school, I started taking lessons and started learning like those open cowboy chords. Then once I got to the army, I started getting with other people that showed me how to do minor 11. So I started picking up more jazz and then from there, everything was like what people showed me. I like, I didn't like that or I learned this and I didn't like that. And so I started to form my own part of gumbo. I started to take and pick and choose when I go grocery shopping. Like, I like this. Let me add this. Let me make whatever meal I want. So that's how I started to formulate learning. So yes, there was formal training and then there was, of course, like training and learning on your own. But my discipline and diligence is different from everybody else. I don't suggest that for everybody. It's It's tough. When you're trying to do this on your own and try to figure this stuff out, it's very difficult and can be defeating. And it also makes you be like, you know what I'm saying? Like, screw it. I'm done with it. You get frustrated. You walk away if you don't have help versus if you have a coach. A coach would be like, this is what you need to work on. This is how you get better. All right, listen, I know it's frustrating. Let's just set it down for five minutes. Let's come back to it. It's a difference when you have that. So, What are your favorite acoustic R&B tracks? I don't have favorites. I don't have favorites. So... Music is music, so there's always something that's, that comes out that's like, oh, I like the, I like those chord changes. I want to say it's my favorite track, you know, acoustic or R&B. So it's, I like to create, so I, I would say that my favorite tracks are the ones that I create, honestly. <laughs> I 
I feel like I have a great palette for R&B and Neil, so I have a great pulse. I've been on a lot of different records, um, and I feel like when I play on these records, like you know, like I put my soul into them. Like you can feel, you can feel the energy. So I would say my favorites are the ones that I played on. You posted a flashback pic of you when you were in Paris on Instagram. I really thought you were there at the moment. <laughs> I was about to join you with my guitar. Yeah, man, I went to Paris. Uh, I've been to Paris a lot of different times, but yeah, that flashback was like, I think from like a year ago. Yeah. I have a Simabali Ibanez. I hate it as, I hate it is my or the guitar. So I'm not really sure. So if you don't like the Ibanez, I mean, you could either change the pickups or you could sell it and then find what you're looking for. That's what I would tell you to do. What other questions do you have? It says, have you already, or can you do a session on the Boss ME80? So I've done a session on the Boss ME80. If you're a member of my um, online community, Carrie's Camp, it's available. So if, like I was telling people before, those that are just joining, if you want to learn how to play R&B the way that I teach or the way that I play, you love what I do, and you need somebody to mentor you, if you're 18 years of age and younger, ask your parents before you go to this website. If you're elder than 18, then go to carriescamp.com. That is K-E-R-R-Y-S-K-A-M-P.com. And I have, I literally went through, this is probably like last week, and I show you how I use the Boss ME80 from my setup to how I tune it, how I, what pedals I use, my settings, my actual settings that I use in order to get my tone. So if you wanna know specifically what I'm doing, I suggest signing up to get those courses. Now that course, along with everything else is gonna, I mean, it'll literally blow your mind how much information I'm giving you, valuable information. I'm not one of these guys who's gonna show you like, oh, just do this kind of chord, and that's not what I'm playing. I'm showing you exactly what I'm doing so that way you're able to dial in and get that same exact tone that I'm playing. Thank you for sharing all your ideas. Totally appreciate it. Man, thank you, thank you, thank you. How important is transcribing in your daily playing and practice? Not, don't. The only thing, I don't even transcribe, I don't transcribe the licks or whatever. So I would say the only thing that maybe I would probably transcribe is maybe the chords, um, but it only depends on if I'm having to learn a specific song that's played a specific way. That's what I would say. What up from Chino Hills? What's up, what's up? So how is it that you know a song's key and play the progression so quickly? My ear is strong. I've been doing this for a very long time. So I can tell when I hear a song, whether it's in a minor chord, I know the shapes and I know the spacing on the guitar. I know the fretboard. That's why I say it's really important for you to know the fretboard, right? So let's just say if I hear a song that's like A minor, E minor, F major, D minor, I know that this song is in the key of C major. Because I know that I've been playing for so long, I can look and see like, oh, okay. But then also, let's just say you're brand new and you're beginner. A, E, F, D, these are all in the key of C major. So I'll play that scale. So that A is the sixth chord in the scale. So that E minor is going to be the third chord in the scale. That F is going to be the fourth. Then that D is going to be the third. So it'll be. Like... Then I can add all extra kind of stuff around it because I, now I know where to go. what I'm saying so like you got to be able to know the formula you got to be able to know the format if you keep it the same somebody else said before like I know these shapes and I, and I want to learn more shapes I just freaked out something that was super simple because I use the same shapes because I know exactly where to go I don't have to guess I don't have to think I don't have to be like oh man what kind of shapes can I make for this I play the shapes the same shapes that I know but it's about the spacing it's about the placement that makes a huge difference so whatever shapes that you already know that's why I teach and I reinforce with my students all the time Learn the shapes, learn the shapes, learn the shapes that I'm teaching. It's going to, I've worked and I perfected by knowing like 
this is the soulful, colorful tones that you want. I've had enough artists to be like, I don't like that tone. You're, you're playing this wrong, whatever. To be like, okay, cool. Let me go back and change. Let me go back and change. And I found the sweet spot. So I've used these same chords for years for different artists, from hip hop artists to neo soul R and B artists to gospel artists. I've used these same chords that I teach. So I'm not telling you anything that I'm just like, oh, I'm just out here just kind of pulling stuff out my butt and just saying whatever. No, I'm telling you because I've had hands and feet on the ground to do this per se. I've played for people like Tori Kelly. I played for people like Two Chains, Ty Dolla Sign. I played for people like Lettucey, Melanie Fiona, Keanu Lede. I've played for a wide spectrum of people that I've used these same things that I'm teaching. So these, so when I tell you like learn the shapes and learn these chords, the chord shapes. The chord shapes don't change. The keys are what changes, and that's what's how you you're able to like duplicate this sound that people find desirable. How do you choose, and how do you know which chords to connect other chords to? That's the part of understanding the relationships when it comes to theory, like knowing that okay, in this scale, every chord structure is set up the same way. You have seven notes that are in the scale, one through seven. After seven, it re eight repeats itself. It's just an octave of one. So understanding that, like I know that, like my one chord, which is my, it's going to be my root, is going to be a major chord. My two and three are going to be minor. So I understand the relationship. So I'm able to know, like, oh, it's going to be a minor shape. It's going to be a minor chord. So I have to play a minor chord. Doesn't matter if it's a minor seven or minor eleven. Whatever it is, it has to be a minor chord. That's how I'm able to understand how to connect chords and, and the relationship that goes in between those. That's what you do. Damn, theory can be very scary. It can be very scary if you don't have somebody to show you how to do it. If you have somebody to show you how to do it, walk you down this path, it's easy. It's easy. And that's why, like, if you, if you talk to a bunch of my different students that are in Carrie's camp, they'll, they'll let you understand and let you see that, listen, I walk you by the numbers. I don't try to throw you out there and make you do whatever. This last Q&A that I did with um, all of my students at the, at the top of the month, I just played, we did an exercise where I was teaching how to use a number system and how to understand some theory. So what I did is I played a song and they had to listen to it and they had to tell me what key, they had to determine what key the song was in. They had to determine what the pr progression was. So I'm doing practical exercises to show you how to really learn and understand like what you're doing. I'm not just gonna throw you out there and be like, swim. I know that can be scary. So what I'm saying like when you're looking for somebody to teach you and show you, you need to go to somebody that knows exactly what they're talking about. I did a year of Carrie's Camp, well worth it. I plateaued in my playing for the longest and Carrie's Camp elevated my playing. Man, I appreciate that. That's Phil, you gotta let these folks know, man. I'm telling you, like, listen, we're, we're out here. I made it my personal mission. I remember, I'll tell you this story and it's probably the last thing that I'll, I'll talk about before I get ready to sign out. So when I was coming up in the game, I reached out to a guitar player that, that were working all the time. I was just like you, I was back in Alabama like everybody else, I was just a guy that wanted to try to learn, try to figure out how to get on. And I had so many questions, right? And I would reach out to guys that I looked up to and all of my emails, all of my comments, nothing ever got acknowledged by the person that I was looking up to. And it made me mad. I'm, I'm talking about it made me mad, like super mad and frustrated because like, I had basic questions that I thought that, you know, maybe they might take the time out and respond to my comments. Never happened. So I promised myself, I was like, you know what? If I ever get on, if I ever make it to that level, I'm going to always give back. I'm going to create a community that where like I'm going to teach people specifically what they want to learn and what they want to know because I know what it feels like to be on the other side of the aisle and frustrated because you can't learn and figure out how to play. And so once I got to the level, I wanted to, number one, make sure I had artists underneath my belt. So I didn't want to be like, oh, I play for such and such and you don't know who that is. If I said I play for Jason Derulo, you know exactly who that is. If I play for Tyrese, you know exactly who that is. If I play for Ty Dolla Sign and Two Chains, you may not know who they're who that is, but these are like household names that you can go Google and see. And I've got footage to show. I've played for Tori Kelly. You can go see these things. So I wanted to have the validation of playing for these artists. And while over this period of time, I've got my head chopped off plenty of times when I've been in rehearsals, like, oh man, you're not playing this right. So going back and perfecting all of these things and these techniques that I'm teaching you guys, that I share with you guys, is because I've again. I've had training to really see, like, does it really work? Oh, do you need to know this? I'm never going to teach you useless information that you don't need. And so that's why I was able to build this school from the ground up to really understand, like, all of the stuff that I've been learning for years and years and years and years that I've applied to so many different situations has proven to be successful. I want to give that back to everybody else. So 
that's what I have. That's what I've done. That's how I've kind of like created like a mindset of I want to give back because I remember being that guy sitting in my living room in Birmingham, Alabama on a Saturday, emailing or commenting to a person like, yo, man, I really love your style, man, bro. Like, how do you do such and such? And for years, never hearing anything. I was one of those guys that like, I was so determined. I'm like, man, I'm going to I'm gonna show you better than I can tell you. And I did not take no for an answer. And I, I bumped my head a lot of times trying to figure this stuff out. Nobody wanted to show me the ropes. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to get on. And once I finally get on, I'm going to get back. So that's really the story of how I got to where I'm at. That's why I've been so successful. Um, it has not been an easy road, but it's definitely been worth it. And to see people comment like Phil just said, like he was plateaued and he signed up for Carrie's camp. And just to see his growth, that's... That's the ultimate compliment that I want to hear now. Like, I mean, I love you know, when people say like, oh, your tone and the way you play. That's great. I'm at a place now where I want to pass the torch to the next guitarist or the person that aspires to want to play. It doesn't matter if you want to just play in your house or if you want to play at your church or if you want to try to do this thing professionally. It doesn't matter what level that you're on. Just for, you, for me to hear that like, oh, man, the stuff that you're teaching has really helped elevated my plan. That's what I'm going for now. Before I used to be going for like, oh man, I'm trying to go on the road with such and such, man. I play for, I play for Jason Derulo, man. We're about to go to like Prague and do this. That was what it was before, but now my my priorities have shifted. It's about really just inspiring the next generation and just like teaching the people how to play the the guitar and really understanding like when you don't play with any restrictions, it's so much freedom. So. That being said, for all those that want to really learn how to play, that are looking to try to go to the next level in their playing, regardless of what that may be like, um, if you're 18 years of uh, age and younger, ask your parents before you go to the site. If you're older, then um, by all means, go to thecarriescamp.com. You can try it out for seven days. That's K-E-R-R-Y-S-K-E-M-P.com. Try it out for seven days, man. Like, you know, road test it, see if it's it's going to be a good fit for you. And then I would openly welcome you to this this community because it's all about family. It's all about sharing. It's all about growing and seeing your growth. So I hope you guys have a great Saturday. Um, I hope you guys are staying healthy. Please be healthy, be safe. If you don't have to leave your house right now, stay at home, stay safe. Um, this COVID thing, man, all the stuff that I'm seeing is real. So um, just protect yourselves. Because I want to hear from you. I want to be able to do these things with so many people that are coming in and talking about like, oh man, your playing has helped. I'm growing. Or I've signed up for Carrie's Camp. I want to continue to hear that. So just be safe. Take care of yourselves. And I will talk to you guys next Saturday at this time, 9 o'clock. All right, man. Peace.